Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Ask Epic. We do this every Wednesday at two o'clock, and we like to just share everything that we know about Epic, and we have many different departments, um, and we like to share this to all of our Epic families that are already Epic families, or maybe someone who, who's out there that needs to learn more about Epic in the future that you're going to, maybe you enrolled for next year. Um, I'm Shawnee Woodruff, and I am with the Epic development team. We are are going to talk today about Epic's Summer Plus program. And we have two wonderful ladies with us today. We have Tanae and Kristen. And during the process of our um, Ask Epic today, if you have questions that you need to ask, you can put them in the chat. And I will also put our um, number that you can get a hold of our department because as we go through this webinar, there might be some things that you think of later and you would maybe like to ask some questions. And if we don't know the answer, we can always reach out to Kristen and today ourselves and get you the answers. So you could always give us a call and I'll give you our phone number in the chat or you can get uh, send us an email as well. Um, so our we have so many departments and so many different programs in Epic, and they're all so amazing. And just to be a part of, of Epic is awesome. So we want to dig in today, though, with the Summer Plus program and talk about, and there's two parts of that. There's a Summer Plus, and the Summer Plus program also has, is an, has an ELL uh, program that they're offering this summer, I think, for the second year. So we're going to talk to Kristen first about Summer Plus in general, and then we're going to talk to Tanae about the EL um program as well with Summer Plus, because there are some differences between the two and the way that we offer those. So Kristen, could you just tell us a little bit about what Summer Plus is, if they don't know anything, in case somebody doesn't know anything about it, and introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, my name is Kristen. Thank you so much for having me here today. I work with the specialty courses team, and I'm so excited to be here today to talk about Summer Plus. So Summer Plus this year is space themed, and it is an optional offering for any second through eighth grade student who wants to expand their learning during the summer. We give students an opportunity to review and to practice their uh, skills that they have learned this year in a hands-on project-based activity. And this year, everything is going to be centered around space. Really excited about it this year. That is really cool. Tanae, just before we get into everything, why don't you share just a little bit about um, who you are and what your program is? Sure. Um, my name is Tanae Acevedo, and I work with the EL department. Um we are doing a component of the EL Summer Plus, which is going to be, um, or which from the Summer Plus program, which is the EL Summer Plus, which is targeted a little bit different um, for students who are already identified as EL, but who also want to expand their um, knowledge into the summer, focusing on English language proficiency um, and the four domains of language, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. That is so awesome. And I think this is our, how many years is this, Kristen, for a Summer Plus? This will be the third, third year that we've had a Summer Plus program, yes. Yeah, and I think, today this is the second year, right, for Correct. the EO? Yeah, so that yes, is so awesome. Yeah, and I remember as a teacher, I was part of the Summer Plus program for um, at least one summer. So that's that's really awesome because I remember it a little bit. Um, so as we said, we, had two, we have two different um kind of models, I guess you would say, for Summer Plus. Um, Kristen, what kind of grades, grade levels, or what kind of um, students can participate in the Summer Plus? So all second through eighth grade students who are currently enrolled this year and have re-enrolled for next year can participate. We don't exclude any type of learner. If any student thinks that they're capable of joining and having fun and expanding their learning by reviewing or enriching the skills that they have learned this year, they're a perfect fit for our second through eighth grade uh, Summer Plus offering. Okay, so, and that's really important for everyone to remember. We do have some new families coming in this next year that are enrolled already for 24-25, but we aren't really allowing that because there's not really a way for us to do that. So we just are allowing our students who are previously our students that have re-enrolled. 
So correct. correct. Yes. All right. And they are eligible for summer plus. Okay. Um, so is summer plus a lot like, um, regular school where we teach all subjects or do we kind of hone in on some specific things? We're going to hone in on math and reading this time. Plus we're going to have that space element, which is going to add a lot of science in there just naturally, but it's mainly a math or a reading focus that gives students that chance to really practice those skills in a hands-on and hands-on approach. It's not um, the same type of, of activities they would have done during the school year where they're completing assignments and turning them in for their, for a grade. It's more um, hands-on and, and um, interactive, it's um, project-based, and it's very collaborative in nature. Okay, so in case somebody doesn't know what project-based means, what does that mean? Well, it means that you take the skills that you've learned and you make it applicable into your world. So if you know about measurements, now we're going to um, plan a trip that will include distances or um, develop a recipe that we might make. Or if you are really good at understanding um, important details in reading, we're going to take those important details and put them into some kind of research project so that you'll have a presentation to share with friends and family. That sounds like so much more fun than just looking at a computer screen, right? I mean, everybody loves to work together on a project or just do something that's very different. And like you said, that hands-on approach is so important for our kiddos. I think you learn so much when you do those types of things. Um, so can a student do both the math and the reading? Absolutely. And we'll get into this probably a little bit later, but with our online version, because we both have online and in-person versions of Summer Plus, um, online, you choose math or reading, and you can enroll in multiples. You can enroll in math and reading, and you can do multiple math classes or multiple reading classes. For our in-person classes, we're going to combine the two, and each camp will cover math and reading sim simultaneously. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's great. And that's another one of those things that, um, that project-based learning really helps with is you can get multiple subjects that you right. can learn in that one setting. So that right. is, we're, it's really cool. We're going to integrate all kinds of skills from math, reading, and like I said, we're going to throw in tons of science in there as well. Yeah, since it's space right? Right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to throw some, some science in there. Okay. So it sounds like to me, when we talk about summer, we think of maybe summer school in the past when students would go, um, a specific amount of time, we kind of condense that down a little bit. So we don't do it all summer long. So when would be our offerings for that? Correct. So we only offer Summer Plus during the month of June, and specifically, it's the first three weeks of June. And each camp is contained within each week. So if a student wants to attend a camp, they can attend week one, week two, or week three. Or if they're ambitious, they can attend all three weeks, but each week would have different camp offerings. Okay. So that's really good to know. So, I mean, we go straight from the end of school, which some, we do know some students finish school a little early, um, but even, even that our end of school year is May 31st. And then we're going to go straight into those summer plus camps, get those out of the way, those first three weeks. And then you have the rest of the summer off to enjoy whatever it is that you would like to do your summer vacations and all those fun things. So we talked about the first three weeks. Um, are we going to be able to go is it Monday through Friday or how does that work? Okay, so um, our first two weeks are Monday through Thursday. So camps will meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Fridays are off because we all know that we like to have a little Friday fun. So Fridays are off from camps. Um, the virtual camps will meet either in the morning or in the afternoon. And the in-person camps will meet kind of in the middle of the day, 10 to 2. Um, the third week of camp, that week of June, let me look at my calendar, June seventh. 17th through the 21st, we're going to have a shakeup in that week. We're going to meet Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to take Wednesday off since that's June 19th. And we want students and families to have the opportunity to observe Juneteenth um, for that. Yeah, that's really nice that we're able to do that. So it does kind of break it up a little bit for that third week, but 
That's okay. It still works out. Um, So you mentioned earlier, and you've mentioned a couple of times, I think I've heard, we're going to do online and in person, which I didn't even know we did this in person. So if a person, if a student wanted to do this in person, where do we offer that at? Okay, so we're offering in-person camps at various locations in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa. So we are meeting in Oklahoma City, Midwest City, Blanchard, Edmond, and Tulsa. Those um, microsites that Epic has in those communities, that's where we're going to have in-person camps. And those camps will meet from 10 to 2. And like I said earlier, it's going to cover science space with a mix of math and reading in each of those camps. And I don't think that I had thought about this before, but I mean, parents just drop off their children, right? They just drop off their students. Is that right? Right. They drop off their students and we will collect all the necessary emergency information that we would need. And if the student, if the student's parents want to stay on site, I think we have the capability to, to accommodate that if we have a few families that need to kind of ease into that, because they're the friendly microsites that you're used to coming to, to meet your regular roster teacher. Right. But we're this year going to be working with um, summer plus teachers and diving into a project based camp. Okay. All right. And so you said we are going to cover math and we're going to cover reading and kind of do that simultaneously if they're on, if they're doing in person, Mm -hmm. Um, if they're doing it online, they're going to, they can pick one or the other. Right. right? So our morning camps online will be from nine to 1030. That's only an hour and a half. So we're going to focus that instruction each day on just math or reading. And then we have afternoon camps that are from 1230 to two. Once again, that's math or reading, but students can pick math in the morning, reading in the afternoon, or maybe they can pick math in the morning week one and reading in the morning week two, kind of mix it up to whatever works best for each family. Okay. So I, I think what I'm gathering here is we're going to offer online and we're going to offer in person all three weeks. Actually, actually. Week three will not have an in-person offering, but okay. you're close. You're really close. Okay. <laughs> so we will have virtual on week one and two, two. and okay. three. So virtual is all three weeks okay. and then in-person is only on week one and two. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I was trying to get that, that straight because I'm, there's a lot of times and dates going on here. Oh. So in case somebody had questions about that, they, they understand that a little better because I, got a little mixed up there too. Okay. Um, So yeah. So we talked about how you, you have to be re-enrolled with Epic in order to join our program. Um, Who else qualifies for summer plus programs? Um, Regular ed kids can qualify for it. Special education students qualify for it. And with today's program this year, any of our EL students can qualify for summer plus. So pretty much any second through eighth graders can qualify for a summer camp. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that it it just, that collaborative part of it that you talked about earlier is so important, whether you're online or in person. um, I think it's really nice for those students to get to see other students that are in the same grade levels participating in the same type of learning, which is really awesome. Um, All right, so let's see here. Um, if we are going to do on, if we're going to do in person, not online, um, they're not there for very long, but is there anything that they need to bring with them for this, these programs? Do they need to bring a suitcase of stuff or, or is it all going to be there or what do they need to bring? Well, I know for sure they probably are not going to need to bring their computers. I think that this is all going to be on paper, pencil, cutting and gluing and pasting. So a lot of those computers can stay at home, which will be a relief for a lot of our learners. Um, This is from 10 to 2. So I would encourage each student to bring a light lunch. Um, I imagine that's going to be kind of a working lunch where everybody's going to grab a snack as they continue to work on their project that they probably won't um, easily be able to to pull away from because those are going to be fun, engaging activities. Um, there might be some minimal uh, supplies, like maybe the project that's going to be um, done for a particular camp might need cardboard boxes. So maybe 
families will be encouraged to, you know, drag up all your Amazon boxes or um, cereal boxes and bring them to camp so that a collaborative project can be used and can be built to be used those. Okay. So that's nice to know. Nobody's going to have to go out and buy a lot of, of things to bring with them or a long laundry list of materials that you're going to have to bring. So we're going to have all those there, except for maybe just a few of those things, like you said, like the Amazon boxes, which surely we have boxes somewhere uh, that we can bring and boxes can always be fun. Right. And those will be communicated to you by your teacher, the camp instructor. So if there is a need, if they're looking for spare boxes or anything of that nature, they'll send that communication out a couple of weeks before class so people can start gathering those up. Okay. So before I tell everybody how they would sign up to do this, let me just um, go back a little bit and talk about Uh, what kinds of things that there are going to be, we said reading and we said math, but what kind of hands-on activities um, can we expect? Okay. So um, I'm going to pop in the chat if I can. I've got a really cool website that's got our course catalog. I'm going to pop this in the chat. And as I do that, I'm going to read out some of the really fun camps that we're going to be offering. This might give you a better idea. So here's one, Cosmic Voyagers and Bridging Worlds with AI Companions. So in this one, you're going to join a journey and you're going to learn about cosmic voyages, past and present, and venture into the depths of space and forge connections. Students will use AI to chat with historical explorers and create presentations in Canva and commensurate um, the week-long journey and exploring. That's a really fun one, right? Yeah, that's, um, I want to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Here's another one. A weekend with ET. Students will work in small groups to create a series of journal entries with artwork detailing adventures an extraterrestrial alien might encounter on a weekend getaway to Earth, Sun, Mars, or any other planet in the galaxy. Oh, those sound really fun. That's those awesome. are two of our reading examples. Here's one that's more math focused, a journey to another planet. On this one, they're going to prepare a journey to another planet using math skills to answer questions and complete flight tickets and passports. Students will create a budget for their trip and they're going to design a town that they would visit using geometry skills. Oh, that sounds like fun. I love budgets. So right. that's really I- fun for kids. Yeah. And then here's the last one I have outer space escape room. Have you guys done those escape rooms? Those yeah. are fun. Those are a lot of fun. They're very challenging. So we have um, an escape room where students are going to work in teams to solve problems and puzzles in order to collect all the outer space items to escape the outer to escape their outer their outer space um, escape room before the time runs out. Um, this is a team effort. And they're going to help solve problems together and save the day. Awesome! I love it. They all sound like they will be a lot of fun. That is not sitting in front of a computer screen and not just doing a workbook. Those are some fun hands-on activities. It sounds like so. Right. Yeah, and and even better to do it with other people, right? Right. You're going to get to learn um, how to collaborate with friends, meet new friends and connections. um, Because I think that that's smart for kids this, this, this time of year to kind of make those, um, those connections so that you can continue the collaborative learning and friendship throughout the summer. Awesome. All right. So we have heard lots of wonderful things. We have a couple more things to talk about, but I'm sure that everyone is kind of wondering how I would sign up to do this program. Yeah. So um, I just popped in the chat the um, some instructions on how to gain access to the Summer Plus intent form. It's found in the parent portal of Power School. So all second through eighth graders who are currently enrolled and who have re-enrolled for next year will have visibility on this intent form. So once you locate it, you're going to click on that form and it's going to ask you all your availability for the summer. So if you don't, um, if you can't attend a camp in week three, then select all the options for week one and two, and then we are going to slip you into all the classes that we can for you based off of what you submit in that intent form. Okay. So again, in the parent portal, 
So I, the department I work in, we do hear a lot from parents that do not know how to get into their parent portal. So if for some reason you cannot get into your parent portal to sign up for this, please reach out to us and we will help you or your teacher can help you also as well um, to reset your parent portal password so you can get in there and get your student signed up for this because you don't want to miss out on this kind of opportunity. Um, so we're just going to allow people to sign up for infinity or is there a limit? Yeah, the enrollment's going to be open for quite some time. We will only close down classes as they become full. And then as classes begin to start. So that first week of June, those classes will no longer be um, taking new enrollments once the class has started, but you will still be able to sign up for week two and three as long as we haven't started those camps yet. Okay. So, and I think I remember you said you the, the signups will go, oh, they'll be open until the Thursday before the next week that starts, right. which Correct. is awesome. Unless it's already full, of course, right. um, then that might be a little different. So I'll just address um, the size of camps. So I think you said that there's going to be around 10 to 20 students per class um, and that in-person classes will have two teachers present for a more of a small room environment for um, a student teacher ratio. Yes. Yes. Okay. Which that's awesome. So we don't have to worry about 50 kids trying to be handled in a, in a classroom with one teacher doing an on, you know, a hands-on project with scissors. <laughs> right. so, yeah. So that's nice to know. That's nice to know. Okay. All right. Kristen, you have given us a lot of information. I am sure that we will probably have to address something else. Um, but we're going to talk to Tanae for a little bit and let her tell us about her program that's part of Summer Plus. So we're going to offer, you said that we're offering this is the second year. And can you tell us what makes it e the EL program different than the regular Summer Plus? Okay, you know, well, regular Summer Plus, you know, it's the hands-on project-based classes, like Kristen said, that are focusing primarily on English and math standards. But here at EPIC, we do have a large population of students, of EL students, who may not have the language to be able to get out of that program everything that it's designed for, which is kind of where the EL Summer Plus comes in. Um, these are also project-based courses, but um, like I had mentioned earlier, they focus on the four domains of language. So the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So we will also have fun science-based um, projects that we're going to be doing, but as the kids are working collaboratively with other students, we're going to ensure that they are practicing their, their English language, you know, speaking to each other, listening, um, ensuring that we have written and um, read language as well. Yeah, sure. And you're going to have the same, um, you're, you're going to have the same theme, the space theme, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just make it sure, because that sounds really fun. So I just want to make sure everybody's doing the same thing. Okay. Yes, All right. That sounds great. Okay. So we know a little bit more about um, the EL plus now. And so can we know that second through eighth graders can participate in this regular summer plus program. Is that the same for the EL or is that different? Nope, we do have a different um, group that we're targeting with our EL Summer Plus. Any student that's currently enrolled at EPIC and is identified as an English language learner is able to sign up for our EL Summer Plus courses. Okay, yeah, that's when great. You're doing, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. When you're doing so, just make sure that you're signing up for the courses for the grade level that you're in currently and not for the one that you're going to be in next year. Okay. All right. So that is something that we really did need to touch on. We want to make sure that these are going to be components that you have already learned over the course of your last of this school year. And so we're just going to make that an extension over the summer. So it's not summer plus for the next grade level. It, we're just continuing it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so we're doing that for all summer plus classes for the EL and the regular summer plus summer plus. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So we know to go to the parent portal to sign up for the summer plus programs, but I think it's going to be a little bit different for your program. Instead of going to the parent portal, we're going to have a different form to fill out. So can you explain a little bit about how someone would go about doing that? 
Yep, so teachers have the link to be able to sign students up for the EL Summer Plus camps. So if you have a student that's already identified as an English language learner and you would like them to continue to work on their English language proficiency over the summer, you can just reach out to your teacher and they can get them signed up. Or I just dropped into the chat a link that gives a little bit um, more information about our EL Summer Plus courses. It has our catalog and also a link to an interest form that the parents can fill out, which will get sent to us. And then we can in turn reach out to them to figure out which weeks and times work best for that family. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. So, I mean, it's a little, it's a little different um, to sign up but it's still doable. Like she said, she, she put the link in there. You can also talk to your teacher. Um, so we can, we can help you get this figured out if you want to get signed up. Um, so we know that Summer Plus is offering online and in person. So is the EL doing the same thing? Yes, EL is doing the same thing. We have the majority of our classes are online. Since our EL teachers primarily teach online, we kind of wanted to mimic that. But we do have um, a few courses that are going to be in person, just like Kristen said, during weeks one and weeks two. And they're going to take place at 50 Penn in Oklahoma oh. City. Okay, so it's not going to be at all the different micro sites that the other Summer Plus is going to be at 50 Penn. Correct. Okay. All right. And that's during week one and two, you said? Yes. Okay. So that's really awesome. That's nice to know. So we do, that's, that's great that we're offering that in person this year. I just love that. Um, I, I just think it will help out so many families to be able to do that. And, you know, I just remember going to, to different summer schools in the past and different summer camps and things like that. And I just don't think that this is just your typical summer school. I think this is very over, over the top. I mean, we, we really have tried to make this the funnest thing for these kids and I, and learning at the same time, which is just phenomenal. I love that. Um, all right. So we are going to have smaller class sizes in EL. Um, so if students are able to enroll in this, um, would they enroll in, is there like class subjects and how many are in a class? So we prioritize the small group size for our EL classes because they kind of foster that environment where all students can actively participate and engage with each other. So our cap for our EL Summer Plus classes are eight students instead of the 10 to 20 um, that regular Summer Plus has. And our classes, although they, they're not you know, specifically targeted to reading or math, a lot of the classes kind of touch on math reading and and the science component. They're all just, you know, thematic project-based classes, um, not specifically math or reading targeted. Yeah, and I'm sorry, did I miss how many? Did you say that already? Yeah, eight in students. A class? In, eight, okay. Yep, and all we're right. gonna have 24 classes in total that we're offering in the EL Summer Plus. Awesome. So there's plenty of room. Yeah, even though they're going to be smaller classes, there's a lot of them to, to pick right. from and to offer. Yeah, so you should be able to get in. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to encourage everyone to to sign up, you know, earlier rather than later. Um, did we already talk about when this goes live? When can they start signing up? Already. Already for both, for programs. both yes. programs. Oh, all right. So you can get in your parent portal now and even better yet, if you can't get in your parent portal, we can get that reset so you can get in there and get signed up. So we want to make sure you get signed up now. That is great. Okay. All right. Um, and then we did talk about a little bit already that, you know, this is for our students who are already re-enrolled for the next school year. So that's another really good benefit right now is making sure that you've re-enrolled next year so that you can be a part of this program. Um, and then, and we can help you with that in our department as well. And then also we just want to, we, this includes everyone. So it doesn't matter if you're on an IEP or if you're on a 504, we can still accommodate and still do the exact same thing. You are you can still do everything the same way. So that's really good to know too. Okay. Um, I wanted, we, we haven't done this the last couple of webinars actually because we've ran out of time. And so I thought maybe we would ask this question. We usually ask a tip and we usually do it at the beginning of webinars. But like I said, we've been really full the last couple of times. We haven't had time to get to it. And so this time I was going to ask you guys ab about a tip. Um, one thing that I know as a teacher and one thing that I hear parents say a lot 
is that they are worried about their student falling behind over the summer or retaining their information that they learned this last year. So Kristen, did, would you have, I'm gonna ask each one of you so you can come up with a different answer. Um, so Kristen, would you have a tip of how parents or students could uh, do something to retain that information they've learned this last year over the summer? Absolutely. So the summertime is the best time to do some of that fun, hands-on, engaging learning. Um, join a book club or a, um, a library reading program. That's a great way to just keep those reading skills alive. Um, math fact games. This is the best time to get out some of those math fact games that are fun and have lots of pieces and manipulatives for students to really engage in. That is a great way to really hone in on those math skills. Um, it's the best time to really learn those math facts is when you're not also learning and doing all the other things that school requires of you. But if you can just focus on the sixes and the sevens, multiplication facts, that helps. And doing it in a game style is always a really great great way to do that. Oh, yeah. I, I love you brought that up about games because that is really the truth. Ga all, almost all games have some type of a learning component in them, or you can make it into a learning component and the kids don't even know they're learning, you know, like regular stuff. So I love that you brought that up. How about you, Tanae? Can you think of something that, that parents or students can do over the summer to help retain yeah, I think one of the things that as a parent myself, you know, if parents are still working over the summer, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming to say, okay, well, I, I still have to go to work and then to come home and try to keep working with my children, you know, finding flashcards and things like that. But just for parents to remember that everything can be a learning experience, include your kids in making dinner, measuring um, you know, following a recipe, wrapping a gift, you know, making sure that you have the area to cover the the box that you're you're wrapping. You know, there's a anything can be can be turned into some sort of learning experience. So making sure that you include your students, you know, in the day to day activities um, that you know are going on at your house, just kind of give them that real life experience to be able to apply those skills that they've been learning throughout the year and keep those. Um, Sure. Maybe by the end of the summer, if they participate in a lot of that, then mom and dad don't have to cook dinner anymore. Right. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids can learn how to do that over the summer with using all their measurements and then they can cook dinner when, once a week or something like that. So that would be awesome. I know there are some older kids that do that. And um, that's that's really awesome that some of these some of these kids really they they love to cook. So. I, I love that. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So um, is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you guys feel like that we need to, to talk about before we start wrapping up? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So it's live now. Summer plus is live now. So they can um, either go to the link that um, Tanae said for her EL program for the summer plus or ask their teacher. And then also you can ask your teacher for the regular summer plus as well. You can go to the parent portal um, and get signed up for that. So that's great. Um, and again, if you haven't re-enrolled yet for next year, this is a really good time to do that so that you can sign up for those summer plus programs. Um, so you kind of have to do that first before you can get into those programs. So that's kind of good um, information for our parents to know so they can get that done. Okay. All right. So we just want to really give you guys um, kudos for coming today, telling us all about these wonderful programs. We have a lot of wonderful programs and this is two of really really great ones. Um, so we just want to thank Kristen and Tanae for joining us and sharing all their knowledge that they have about these two programs and helping our families find the opportunity to join in the fun of learning right over the summer, because it doesn't have to be boring. You can also, um, and we just, we look forward to, I look forward to seeing pictures maybe of the summer plus space theme, which will be really cool. Cause I bet that's going to be fun. Oh, I have one more quick thing to tell okay. you. I made a connection with our comet. Did you know we have a mascot? It's a little comet. And it's, the comet that is true. Yes. The comet is going to be coming to the microsites to our in-person camps and making a visit. I just got word the other day. How fun. 
That will be fun. Okay. That's great. That's good news. Okay. All right. So if you have other questions that you have for us, or maybe we didn't address something with Kristen and Tanae today, and we can help you out with that, you can always send us um, a text or, I mean, an, an email, or you can also call our department. You can call us at 405 405- uh, 400-0651, and that rings into our um, department, and then we can answer those questions for you, and if we don't know them, we can always reach out to Kristen and Tanae, and we can find out. You can also email us at edt at epiccharterschools.org, and that was also put in the chat earlier. And again, we just want to thank Kristen and Tanae for coming on today. We hope that you guys have a great success, which I'm sure you will, over the Summer Plus program. And um, look forward to it, you know, for the fourth year and the third year for both of the the programs. So, um, again, thanks for being here. And we will see everybody next time. Bye.